I have been working at a COVID pneumonia critical care center for the last few months. Of all the patients I've treated so far, a young male in his mid-20s stands out as the most memorable case. On today's episode of Interesting Medical Cases, I'm going to explain how he treated and saved a severe COVID-19 pneumonia patient. Stewart didn't have pneumonia when he first came to us. He presented to us with fever and body aches for only three days. He became positive for COVID-19 after a rapid antigen test. He didn't have any previous medical conditions. Unfortunately, he had declined to take the COVID-19 vaccine. We take a baseline chest x-ray in all COVID-19 patients, and this was his initial chest x-ray. The lungs were clear with no evidence of pneumonia. Take a good look at this x-ray because the inflammatory response is going to damage his lungs in the next few days. Around the ninth day of the illness, a nursing officer informed me that Stewart's oxygen saturation was 89. Our target oxygen saturation for Stewart was above 92. The saturation had improved to 98 after the nurse put him on an oxygen face mask. I ordered another chest x-ray. In this x-ray, the lungs appear hazy. This pattern is called ground glass appearance. It's a sign of inflammatory response against COVID-19 pneumonia. Inflammation of the lung leads to the notorious acute respiratory distress syndrome. How can we prevent this inflammation-mediated lung damage? The answer is steroids. Oxygen requirement is an indication for intravenous dexamethasone which acts by reducing the inflammatory response of the body against the COVID virus. We also started the antibiotic ceftriaxone to treat a possible secondary bacterial infection. His saturation was still around 98 the next day, but there was one problem. He was breathing fast. Though the saturation was 98, his respiratory muscles were working vigorously to maintain oxygenation. This is not a good sign. We had to do something to reduce the work of breathing before the respiratory muscles get exhausted. So we decided to put him on continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP ventilation. In about one hour of CPAP support, his work of breathing improved. At this stage, we wanted to give him tocilizumab, which is a potent anti-inflammatory drug. It acts by blocking interleukin-6, which is a major inflammatory mediator. Before giving such a potent immunosuppressant, it is essential to exclude underlying bacterial sepsis. We send his blood for procalcitonin, which is a marker of bacterial sepsis. It was negative and we were able to inject Stewart with tocilizumab. Why did his oxygen requirement increase? This time, we did a high-resolution CT scan or HRCT of his chest. The HRCT scan looks at a cross-section of the chest. You can appreciate the ground glass pattern here, but this time there was a new development. Can you see these white patches? These are called consolidations. Now it's no longer early pneumonia. This phase of pneumonia is called organizing pneumonia. Dexamethasone was not enough to control the inflammation. Therefore, Stewart was started on methylprednisolone pulse doses. Due to the unavailability, we weren't able to give remdesivir, which is an antiviral drug that reduces the time to recovery in severe COVID pneumonia patients. But the World Health Organization doesn't recommend remdesivir for routine care, as it has not shown to decrease mortality and the need for mechanical ventilation. We also did a bunch of tests, including a CT pulmonary angiogram, to exclude pulmonary embolism which is a known complication of severe COVID-19 disease. Stewart was on a blood thinner called anoxaparin to prevent pulmonary embolism. Stewart improved over the next few days and we gradually tailed off his oxygen therapy. He was discharged on the 21st day of the illness. Help my channel by pressing the like button. I'll see you soon with another interesting medical case.